could lose my baby right now. Okay, so this is what happened. So what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angel and today I just wanted to tell my birth story. Okay, if you don't know, I am a mom to three girls. For my first pregnancy, I was I went three days over my due date, and for my second pregnancy, I was two day or three days early. But this time around, I thought that I would go ahead and schedule an induction. My second pregnancy, I did progress fairly quickly and um, they always say like your third baby just I don't know you never really know what to expect with any of your pregnancies and your deliveries but I just didn't want to risk going into labor in my car or giving birth in my car so for that reason I decided that I would just go ahead and schedule an induction with my midwife and she scheduled my induction the day before my due date so I went in the morning of my induction and I um, was induced around nine o'clock in the morning. Um, I was progressing fairly slowly. When I got there, I think I was only like two, centim two centimeters dilated and I wasn't effaced or anything. When they hooked me up to the monitor, you could see that I was having contractions. They were fairly strong according to the monitor and they were they were pretty close together but i wasn't feeling any pain and that continued through the entire day and my um, midwife she just kept coming in she was like do you feel any of these and i'm like no it just feels like period cramps to me like it doesn't feel like contractions or anything they just feel like like period cramps and i'm like i've honestly been feeling these for weeks now <laughs> and they don't hurt me like i'm i'm just kind of rolling with it you know yeah, I didn't really feel any pain with my contractions and um, so what happened was I started off with one midwife and then my favorite midwife was supposed to be coming in that night by 6 o'clock. She's the one I actually wanted to deliver me so I was actually happy that I hadn't gone into labor before she got there. So she checked me and when she did she was like okay i'm gonna give you like an hour and then i'm gonna come back and check you again and if you haven't progressed that much then i'm going to suggest that we go ahead and break your water so that maybe that will speed things along and then she also knew that i i wanted an epidural but um i was honestly waiting for I was waiting to feel like true pain before I got an epidural because I didn't it's okay I'm the, I'm weird so I'm the type of person that when I feel pain um it's when I'm in labor I want to feel the pain because it encourages me like okay things are moving along I'm not just gonna be pregnant forever so I actually I mean I I find encouragement <laughs> I find motivation from feeling the pain and making it through each contraction and um, I kind of wanted to do that on my own because I had done it with my other two pregnancies. Like I, I felt the contractions for a steady amount of time before I got an epidural. And I don't know, I always just felt really good that I did that. My midwife suggested that I, if I get my water broken, and she left all this up to me. She was like, I can break your water. We can get you an epidural. Like she was giving me choices. You know, she wasn't just like, oh, you have to do this. She was giving me the choice to do this stuff. So she was like, we, what we could do is go ahead and get the epidural and then break your water. That way, if you start progressing after the water, your water's broken, then you'll already have the epidural. And um, because after a certain point, you cannot get the epidural. So um, I, 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 I went ahead and I made the decision that I would go ahead and get the epidural even though I wasn't feeling any of my contractions, they literally just felt like period cramps. So basically this is what happened. Um, it's kind of hard to talk about because it was a really, really scary moment in my life. Like I, I was terrified when this happened. Okay, so this is what happened. She broke my water and right when she broke my water, the baby did this like flip in my belly. Like I literally felt her like spin and I didn't really think much of it because she had been moving around so much that entire day. Um, like intense movements, not just like little move movements like she normally does. Like they were big movements all day. She had been doing that. And so all day the nurses had to keep moving the monitor on my belly to find her heartbeat. So 
she did this giant flip when my water broke and her heart heartbeat disappeared off the monitor and I, I literally said this I was like oh it's fine she she's been doing that all day um and so then the nurses the nurses are taking the monitor and like sliding it around on my belly trying to find her heartbeat again and then I literally like I was I was not concerned at all because like I said she had been moving all day but then I look over at my husband and he's on the left side of me and I look over at him and his face went from like happy like oh my gosh we're gonna have a baby to all of a sudden just like like he was he looked super concerned it just went like serious and so right when I, I saw his face do that then I got scared um so then, then I got really, really quiet and I didn't look at anyone else. I just kept looking at him like, what's happening? You better tell me what's happening because this is too much for me right now. Um, then, um, then all of a sudden, all of these nurses come in the room and they throw this oxygen mask on me. And I've never had this happen before, ever. All of my labors have always been super, super smooth, super normal. Um, so they throw the oxygen mask on me and then I like, I literally just went numb it was like I couldn't react, um, which is probably a good thing <laughs> at, um, if you think about it. But so they put this oxygen mask on me. I'd go numb, and then they they start trying to flip me, and it's just all these like nurses, like little ladies, you know, um, <laughs> trying to flip me over. And I'm a dead weight because I have the epidural, so everything is numb from the waist down. I cannot physically move my body by myself. So then Aaron, my husband, he like grabs me and starts flipping me and um, like getting me into all these positions that they want me to be in. And I just remember like literally just like going numb and staring at the bed sheets because that's the only thing I could do was like I just focused in on the bed sheets. And I don't know why I did that. It, it, was, it was like a defense mechanism almost. Like I just zeroed in on these bed sheets on the thing and just focused on those. And then I finally like snapped out of this like numb feeling and then I was like I, I like started like rationalizing things and I'm like oh my gosh my baby is gonna like it's not my baby's not gonna make it and that thought literally went through my head like I could lose my baby right now um and there's this whole time they're still trying to find her heartbeat or get it to go back up um and so then I um I just remember like they just like kept flipping me around I I thought oh my gosh I'm gonna lose my baby um I've been pregnant this whole time I've been sick and now I'm not gonna have her I'm not gonna get to hold her and I like just I, I just th I, as soon as that thought came in my mind then I just started going God is good God is good God is good because that's the only thing I could think of I'm like I need to pray but I don't know what to pray so I just started repeating God is good God is good and um i didn't really care if i looked or sounded crazy i was like i'm doing what i need to do to take care of my baby and that's the only thing i could think of at the time was to say god is good over and over again and um and then all of a sudden i was just like um so i'm saying god is good god is good and then my midwife she comes up beside me and she goes angel we're gonna have to do an emergency c-section so then I just start ripping like my nose ring out, all my jewelry. I'm just like ripping my rings off and I'm like, let's go. And by the way, I'm not wearing my ring because I have dry skin. I have eczema, not that that matters. But anyway, so so then I'm like ripping all my rings off and I, um, I'm ripping my nose ring out. I'm ripping all my rings off and then I look, um, so my midwife, she comes up to me and she's like, we're going to have to do an emergency C-section. And so then I just start ripping off all my jewelry. I rip out my nose ring. I rip off all my rings. And um, then I, um, I I just say, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's just go right now. Let's go. <laughs> like I didn't care that I was going to have a C-section. It didn't even like bother me that I wasn't going to have a natural birth. I was just like, get this baby out of me and I want her to be safe. And so then, um, as soon as she, she told me and they were pr like getting ready to, um, take me to get my, um, C-section, they're still moving the monitor around on my belly. And then I just pray and I'm like, God, make this baby's heart beat. And then it was like, right. It, it seemed like right when I said that prayer that her heart, they found her heartbeat and it went back up 
and it was just normal again like nothing had even happened like her heart rate just went back to normal and then then after all of that's over with and um after that like big scare um after they find her heartbeat i'm just like okay now i can freak out and i just started crying like it was the most intense scary moment i've ever had and uh yeah so i just like i just started like bawling and um and then of course then my heart rate goes up um so i don't know um i don't know why that happened and i don't think anyone in that room knows why that happened when my water broke i no one could tell me why at least so i don't know it happened though um so so then after that happens um i like finally can calm down after like a big freak out like i like i went from not freaking out to like oh my god that happened and now i'm gonna freak out like after the fact so um once I was able to calm down then they wanted me to like go ahead and try to get some rest because like I said I had been up for almost 24 hours at this point and so I, I got like maybe an hour and a half of sleep um and then I woke up and they wanted to put the peanut ball in between my legs so that was the a peanut ball is like a yoga ball but it's shaped like a peanut and they just put it between your legs to help you um open up and dilate and um, they did that with my second daughter and as soon as they put the peanut ball in between my legs with my second daughter I like I dilated really quick so anyway the same thing happened this time they put the peanut ball in between my legs and I dilated all the way to a nine and then I was ready to start pushing around um, two o'clock in the morning and um, before I started pushing my midwife she told me she was like you need to push this baby out really fat like as fast as you can because we don't want her heart rate to drop again um and the whole thing that happened before to happen again and so i was in agreement with that i was like nope i'm not gonna let that happen again and um so i just pushed I, I pushed really really hard and with each push i honestly didn't feel like i was doing much but um i only pushed for 30 minutes and then she finally came out and um they put her on my chest i did skin to skin right away and apparently my husband told me that when she came out her cord was wrapped around her neck but my midwife unwrapped it so quick that i didn't even notice um so they put her on me and i'm doing skin to skin with her and then i realized i'm still in a lot of pain and i'm like why am i in so much pain like normally after you deliver you don't really feel anything else like you're just so content and happy that you don't feel anything else not even like the placenta or anything coming out you're just i don't know it, i've never felt anything else in i'm on the epidural so i really shouldn't be feeling anything um but i was i was feeling like intense pain so i was like i asked my midwife i'm like did i tear or something because i'm in a lot of pain right now and she was like oh um she's like you just tore a little bit but it's nothing nothing serious and then it it turns out that i had had a hematoma on the right side and my husband said that it was literally the size of his fist that's what it looked like um and if you don't know what a hematoma is just look it up because i don't really want to go into detail about that but anyway it it was on the right side and it was giant and um so they had to bring in like the doctor on call to look at it because they didn't want it to continue to fill up with blood because they said if that continued to happen then i was going to have to have surgery and um thank god it wasn't filling up with blood but um after i was discharged from the hospital i was on bed rest for like two weeks um because i literally couldn't i i couldn't move around because it was that painful like just standing hurt so they put me on bed rest for about two weeks and then they told me it was going to take about eight weeks to fully resolve itself because it's one of those things that it will eventually heal itself over time you just have to have time to do that so yeah i'm six weeks out right now and um it is pretty much healed up it's still a little tender um but other than that it looks like the same and it's like completely normal <laughs> looking um tmi sorry but yeah it it's basically back to normal and um it's just like a bruise now so it's not anything serious um 
but yeah so um it was a pretty it went from being a pretty calm birth where i thought it was going to be my easiest birth ever to intense and i ended up with a major injury um that i was on bed rest so yeah you just never know what kind of birth you're going to go into i guess and every pregnancy is different and every delivery is different it doesn't matter if it's your first child or your third um so i yeah i'm so grateful though that i have a healthy baby girl she was eight pounds five ounces and she was 20 inches long and she was gorgeous and she had hair and sorry so my camera just died so let me just say this really quick um she was perfect that's i think that was the last word i said um but yeah so anyway thank you guys for watching my video and if you liked it please give it a thumbs up please subscribe and please leave a nice comment down below and i love you guys bye <laughs>